Hi, if you're watching this full episode, you'll probably subscribe to Peak Magazine on issue.com. Our latest issue is Tokyo 16, which is available now. Uh, we really appreciate you checking this out and subscribing to the magazine. It's been a lot of hard work and we really appreciate you taking the time to not only buy it, but look at it, read it and comment and basically get in touch and check out the content. Um, this section is a new section within Peep called Show and Tell. And it's where we contact people with private collections, uh, people who want to talk about things that they have been collecting for God knows how many years. Some oddities in there, some obscurities, um, which I have quite a lot of. Um, and so this is a section where I've put myself forward to talk about my VHS tapes, um, which I have personally been collecting for probably best part of 25 years or maybe 20 years. Um, started off messing around with a Betamax tape, which I had only 10 years ago, but it broke on us. Um, so been involved with media for a long time. So this is the chance where I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk you through some of my favorites. Got a lot of, I've got a lot of tapes in there that you probably will never be able to get again. Um, and that didn't get re-released on DVD and all the rest of it. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to walk you through and some of them don't, some of them don't even play now, but I think it's more of a, I see it more now as an installation um, for people to look at, but um, it's hidden away at the back, but if you look close on the people live shows, you can kind of, kind of see them. Um, so that's it. Um, thanks again for watching this and let's check the VHS tapes out. So straight off the bat, five box sets of The World at War, uh, narrated by Eric Port Porter, um, episodes 1 to 4 plus special presentation. I did um, actually have a chat with one of my friends years ago and uh, he, he, he was talking about how he, he had these on uh, DVD and I, I actually said I, ha I had them on VHS tape and he says that's even more badass so I was quite, pl quite pleased with that. Evil Dead, uh, Stanley Kubrick's full metal jacket. Boom. Um, Scarface, Al Pacino, Evil Dead, Total Recall, McVicker, Superfly, Mad Max, Apocalypse Now, which is probably one of my favourite films, uh, Midnight Cowboy, Goes King of Comedy, Robert De Niro, Rasputin, Raging Bull, Casino, The Untouchables, Superfly, TNT. You've probably heard that in the Jules and Pulp Fiction when he says um, um, MF Superfly TNT that's a, a reference to the actual film oh and another one which I think is probably one of the most violent films Robocop but no one really sees it as a super uh, violent film but I, th I think it's definitely up there for it's, it's time it's time as well Jack Johnson the, the whole story of Jack Johnson. I had the full box set. I, I've also got Joe Lewis, but I uh, also had Jack Dempsey and Rocky Marciano's uh, as well. But um, I've, I've only got two left. I don't know where the other two of the other three have, have gone. But um, that's one of my favourites. Uh, one of my favourite all time boxers. First black heavyweight world champion, Jack Johnson. So I'll always, I'll always keep that. Um, Robert De Niro, Taxi Driver, which is uh, still a gothic classic, um, directed by Martin Scorsese. Uh, Logan's Run. I think th this is, I think this is a, a part of the collection where it gets really obscure because 
I've spent that much time over the years. I mean, I don't now. I haven't haven't looked at these for absolutely years, and I don't really play them now. When I kind of look back at it all, the um, when I kind of look back on it all, that all the time and uh, and effort I've spent labeling all all these up. I don't know if you can see them all, but like bad lieutenant, once were warriors. It's just uh, just hundreds i mean on each of these tapes there must be about sometimes there must be about two or three films um and then that that's not to mention the you know the uh the documentaries on there and the i mean i've just recorded everything everything i could possibly record everything i possibly record i could have recorded i have actually recorded the height of the height of the the recording madness um I've just looked in there, Anthony Gormley documentary, The Making of the Exorcist. Um, I mean, this obviously all this is before um, YouTube and all the rest of it, so this this was my way of, of collating information on to you know, to get research on little documentaries that I wanted to do at university and all the rest of it. Um so obviously this is before YouTube. This is a way of collating all this information so of course now you can just go straight on youtube and just find what you want but but back in you know 15 to 20 year ago you had you had to collate this information somehow and you had to you had to keep recording stuff so this is basically what i've got um also a a couple of little, little gems i've also got um robocop on spectrum tape as well uh, by ocean but i've got i've got a lot of the ones that i've been collecting over the years um chase hq 9.99 i mean that was even expensive then i mean that's expensive now uh dundarak don't know if anyone remembers dundarak playing on the um playing on the the spectrum 48k where it was basically a walkthrough game where you had to type in what you wanted to do and where, you, and where you wanted to go. But if you didn't know what to type in, you would just be there for hours. I mean, you you'd have to wait for the game to load in, which would sometimes be an hour anyway. Um. So you would type in turn left. You would go left. Turn right. You would go right. You would come to a door, and then you would you would quick quickly. <laughs> You would quickly run into problems because you would say "open the door, do not," and then it would reply "do not understand." Uh, knock at, knock on the door, do not understand. Um, shout at the door, do not understand. You you know you kind of get the message. You would be there for like maybe a couple of hours trying to trying to type in what what you would do, and it was just think thinking back. I mean, why would anyone play it? But I found myself playing it, you know, for hours and hours and hours. So done, Dirac. Um, forty-eight K Spectrum. Um, what else? Planet of the Apes. Um, I also have a, a Van Gogh documentary, Lust for Life. Um, had that for God knows how long. I've had that one. Salvador Dali. Um, The Witch Hunter. That's an, uh, another horror, much like the Wicker Man. Um. Evil Dead 2, Zombie Flesh Eaters, all obscure VHS tapes that, like I say, I keep saying I've been collecting for a lot of years. It's 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 weird because um I've I've moved house like a lot in the in the space of like ten ten years. I must have moved about twenty twenty, 20 times or, uh, or something, and I've lugged these tapes everywhere. Everywhere I've been, I've lugged these tapes in boxes, black bags, and I've had friends helping. Lugging the tapes around, and uh, it's just kind of I can't really get rid get rid of them. Um, everywhere, everywhere I go, they go. So they they always gonna have a place, um, and they're always gonna sit in the they're always gonna sit in the Peep Live Studio. But um, I mean, when I first got involved with recording media off TV. It, it was with a, a Betamax tape, and I actually did have Betamax tapes, but um, I think I may still have one some uh, somewhere. 
but the, I think I think there was a miss saying that um, the, there was a myth going around that the Betamax tapes were actually better quality than the VHS tapes, but I, I don't think it was true because I, I tried them both and there, there was virtually no difference. Um, if anything, the if anything, the VHS tapes looked a bit better because every Betamax tape was just either mangled or creased, um, smudged with fingerprints on. Because they've just been in circulation for so many years, and um, they're just not going to last, you know. I mean, these are probably uh, degrading right now. Uh, there's only there's only some of them work, but um, I mean, most of them work. There's only some of them that don't work. I mean, oh, was it your MTV Raps was on? Um, I used to I used to give uh, me me uncle uh, a lot of tapes to. Because it, it used to be on uh, MTV, got to be uh, f- fifteen year ago now, and it, I think it used to come. I think it used to come on about two a.m. And, uh, and my and my uncle used to pre-record these these um your uh, your MTV raps, and uh, I've got like hun- hundreds of them uh, recorded now. Just having a look at there, I might only have a few left, but there was. Um, the height, the height of my VHS madness was me uncle actually recorded over his wedding with a Yo MTV Raps ep- episode, um, and as you can imagine, his wife probably wasn't too pleased about that. But I had it recorded, so that was the main thing. A uh, lot of Reggie Cray documentaries, Jacob's Ladder, John Lennon from Dust Till Dawn. Oh, I used to record quite a lot of the uh, badass. Uh, Chan- Channel Four episodes uh, with Ice T, um, and I used to record a lot of uh, Rapido. Uh, if anyone can remember uh, Rapido, I used to record a lot of that. So the Long Good Friday, I'm just looking at there. So what I had to do was just kind of record anything, uh, anything that was in vaguely interesting or th- something that I wanted to work out or find out more about, and keep watching and keep watching and keep watching. Um, if anyone remembers the scotch, the old scotch tapes with the uh, skeleton um, play recording off fade away. But obviously, I've got a lot of scotch tapes, yeah, because I think scotch were were, were one of the best. Um, I'm just looking there. Francis Bacon, Death Wish, uh, a documentary on Thelonious Monk, uh, the Grizzly Man. We've obviously co- covered that on on the on one of the Peep Live shows. Um, Mike Tyson documentaries, Serpico, uh, Carlitos Way, The Untouchables. Mainly, these are mainly documentaries, not films. There is a lot of films in there, but um, I'm just looking in there. Kirk O'Bain about about a son, uh, Trespass, Living Dead. I've got a lot of uh, horrors. Um, Theatre of Blood, um, Vincent Price. I was all. I've also got on. Not on VHS, but I've got on um, DVD um, the Abominable Doctor Fives, Doctor Fives. Um, so this is, I think, this is maybe just before Doctor Fives, the the-, the Theater of Blood, um, Superman two thousand and one, A Space Od- uh, Odyssey, Bad Lieutenant, Dracula, uh, Stanley Kubrick's Boxes. Um, you see when. You might be thinking of this and like saying, "Well, so what? You can just check them out on YouTube." But this is all obviously pre pre uh, YouTube. I don't know if you can get this now on DVD. I've got a funny feeling you can't because um, some of the a lot of the VHS tapes I've got now weren't re released for for uh, for D, for a DVD. And um, some of some of these you can't you can't even get now. You might be able to get bits and bobs on YouTube and watch scramble bits but um this is a really dark comedy starring robert de niro directed by martin scorsese uh weird science spent a lot of time watching this with friends of mine mickey have you watching this spent a lot of time just watching weird science (laughs) um it was just the go-to film when you were a, t- a teenager and you are maybe getting into a, co- a couple of beers and drinking alcohol with your friends in, in the house and uh, 
this was always the first the first choice for their Kelly Lee Brock. Um, Regent Bull, another... As you can probably tell, I'm a huge uh, Robert De Niro fan and Stanley Kubrick fan. Um, with my boxing collection and, you know, uh, in, interest, uh, Regent Bull, I've had that for a lot of years. There's some oddities in there that you that are probably going to be quite hard to find. Like, I've just seen one there, the the making of The Exorcist. I think that's quite cool because um, I think that's that's a one that you'll not see quite often. Um, uh, Westworld, Trespass. A When I Heard Talk documentary, The Candyman, The Candyman 2, Man on a Wire. Um, there's another Ridley Scott film there but I haven't marked it uh, Misery which is a, quite a dark film The Harder They Come uh, interview on Robert Maxwell as you can see I just used to record like uh, anything that vaguely in- interested us at the time uh, Planet of the Apes so obviously terrified of Planet of the Apes when I was a kid but um, grown to love it over the years that's a classic oh the, this is a film that kind of strikes a chord it's one of the first uh, horror films I actually watched when I was a kid called well I've actually recorded recorded it on a film called Go and Steady which whatever that was and then I've also had Freaks on there if anyone can can remember the um, the early black and white kind of short film documentary called freaks it was uh, quite a classic but i've got that and i've also got psychomania mania psychomania where there's it's evolves uh, like a uh, a, a bike it's a british film i think it, it might have been uh, a, a um a hammer film where it's a british film uh, a hammer a horror uh, production i think Psych- psychomania where it's like a, bi- a biker gang and one of the guys gets killed by accident the leader gets killed and um yeah he comes back as a ghost to tell his gang to go go and kill themselves so the all they've all got like really ingenious ways of um really creative ways of of killing themselves on bikes um that was one of the first horror films that i seen i must have been about um I must have been about six years old or something. Um, be granted, but let us stay up watching all these Hammer films. That's it, basically, and I'm really pleased you've you've uh, you've caught on to this. And if you're watching this, if you're watching this whole episode, you're probably subscribed to our magazine, and um, we really appreciate that. And um, thanks for subscribing and uh, either buying one issue or subscribing to to the four per year, but. Again, really appreciate it and um, thanks so much and thanks so much to Issue.com for making this happen because um, we hadn't we hadn't put a, a new magazine out for about a year until they got back in touch and expressed how much they, they wanted, how much they liked the content and wanted to produce more content. So that's where we're basically are now. So big thanks to Issue.com and... Um, we really appreciate uh, appreciate you reaching out to Pete Magazine. This was our first show and tell episode. That's basically it. VHS tapes alive and kicking. Cheers. <laughs>